this webinar to be recorded, please just tell us in the chat. That would be great. And um, maybe just briefly about um, the three of us. So it's actually um, Hannah. Hello. Uh, she's our comms expert. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my name is Hannah Gunnarsson. I am from Sweden uh, and I am a policy and communications person here at WCF in Munich. Uh, I also am the regional representative and the regional coordinator for women's major group for our, our uh, region here in UNIC. Um, so I work mostly on Agenda 2030, but as you know, that includes a lot of things. Yeah. Yes, and then we're also here with Jane, who's done incredible work on the Ecofeminist Scorecard as well. Yes, I, um, I study in Edinburgh, but I'm taking a year abroad here. I studied law here in Munich, and I've been working, it's been excellent. I've been working with Anya and Hannah on this project and been assisting in research, setting up the website and the campaign work. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> and me, I'm Anya. I um, yeah, also work in the German office. And I'm mainly responsible for the Agenda 2030 um, and its implementation in Germany. And I also work on renewable energy projects and policies. So now we would like to start um, telling you a bit more about our Ecofeminist Scorecard. So uh, Jane and Hannah will start doing that. And um, we kind of want to tell you how it came about, um, but also um, how how we how the scoring works and uh, the scorecards that actually already exist and in the end we will have time for questions. So, Anna and Jane, please could you tell us a little bit about how the scorecard came about? Certainly. Um, so, our project is mainly directed at voters in the EU election. Our scorecard is intended as a tool for voters to see how their parties in their countries um, have committed themselves to our eco-feminist demands. Um, I hope you can see, all see this on the screen, but this is our website here and um, with a small introduction about our scorecard. Um, and it basically came about in the broader context of um, movements that we've had in recent years, among other things, of course, Greta Thunberg's Values for Fortune, uh, for Future, sorry, um, and the break of free from plastic movement. And we've just seen over the last number of years a growing movement for eco feminists. And um, yes, we. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is that we, like, in, I think it was in January we started talking about this and we came to terms that there is so many manifestos out there and it's difficult for, say, we work on it, so it can be like difficult for us, but I mean, it's even more difficult for like lay people who do not work on political issues to kind of find what, what are the parties actually saying? Because, you know, sometimes it can be a lot of jargon or they can say that they're for something that then when you look deeper, all their politics that they put forward actually do not say that they're for that specific thing. So we wanted something that would be easy to use and easy to kind of understand. And um, yeah, it, it's like targeted because we found out, Regine, you found out that mm -hmm. last year elections. Um, yes, well, um, from working with the young um, the organization, Young Trump, Ugh. young feminists in Europe, we find the shocking statistic that I think almost only 18% 18 of 18 to 25 year old women actually participated in the 2014 election, which I find because I'm in that age bracket quite shocking. So um, this is obviously not totally to our only target group, but obviously we want to reach out to yeah. young women. Um, Yes. So that's why we, we picked the format that we hoped would kind of speak to more people and it's not super scientific but it's more based on a language that is more accessible to people mm -hmm. and um, we also wanted something that um, it, it's the first step but it's for sure uh, not the final step in your selection of who you should vote for. Uh, we wanted something to like teach people how to dig deeper and we didn't want something that we tell people this is what you should vote for just like something to kind of start that awareness that 
if you want to vote, if climate is a really important thing for you that we've seen with the youth movements now, um, then like if you want decision makers to kind of take that onto agendas, then you want to vote on people who actually represent these issues that the movements now are pushing for. And there are parties that do represent these things. So this is what we wanted to help people find. Um, uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Um, so you put it nicely together. Do you want to show it to us and where we can find it? Yes, certainly. So as I've already shown you, this is our website here. And if you click on this link, um, it will bring you to a PDF version of our scorecard here. And um, just a word on the layout. Um, to the left, we have our eco-examinist demands, um, which we developed together um, based on the WCFs, what we work on, our general campaigns, and um, our uh, general... Yeah, theory. so it's based on issues that, for sure, this is not, like, there are more issues that are important to eco-feminists. This is not, like, the only issues important to eco-feminists. We're completely aware of that. But we needed to limit it down because it's just an A4. We needed something that was short. Um, so we picked some matters that, that is very important for us and that we also saw is it comes from our political work that we do with our partners. So it's not just important to us as an organization, but also to our partners in the networks we're in. And certain things of these issues we work on, say like energy, climate, and toxic chemicals, and um, power, like period power, but other topics we might not work so much on, say fashion, but we pick these, um, Topics because we know these are important to young voters. Uh, there are strong movements online where you see that these these other topics are also incredibly important, or and that's why we added them to the. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if we go very briefly, obviously, because we're a little short for time, but um, maybe if we start with the drastic action on climate change now, um, I'd say because um, what would you say we. We saw we saw the big movement of the of you, everyone probably knows about Greta Thunberg, the Swedish young girl who's spearheading like the, one of the biggest movements like of our time. Um, so we we saw that and we know and this is also a very very important topic within our own work. Um, so we wanted so it says here now if we look at it it says drastic action on climate change now. Then you we have added some text underneath for the people using the scorecard to kind of understand what are the, the things you want to find in manifestos to ensure that this is what they speak of. So we wanted um, some form of recognition that EU is one of the biggest global polluters. We know this. We want EU to take responsibility for being one of the biggest polluters. So we need parties, we need to find which parties are also on this side that also sees that we have to do something about it. We wanted some, we were looking for some kind of urgency. So we wanted, Greta has said we have to double this climate target. We, we have to see it as a climate crisis. We have to, so th these are kind of um, uh, the add-ons. So you can add on many other things, but uh, we need urgency. We need to look at the gender aspects. We also need to look at our historical responsibilities um, as within the EU uh, and how our, our actions in the EU affect people in the global south or our partners um, in low-income countries even within our region. Um, and then we wanted language that related to structural barriers. What are the barriers faced today and why are we not improving? Why is the climate action not going in the speed we want it to go? And uh, could it be certain things such as militarism? Is it because all the money is going to militarism? Is it other structures like patriarchy that affects that women will be more disproportionately affected and then there's racism? So these kind of things um, we wanted to have a sense and that's when you then go to the bottom of this PDF, you see there's a backside. So this is for you to get a little bit more meet to understand a little bit more um, what other things you could look for in manifestos and a little bit of an explanation of why these things are important. Um, so that's just shortly about one of the topics. I, I'm happy, we're happy to speak about the other topics as well. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. 
Yeah, thank you very much for the background um, on the ecofeminist scorecard. Maybe now you could uh, tell us how to actually use the scorecard. Yeah, so I'll talk you quickly through our website that we've developed um, for people to not only use our scorecard as a voter, but also someone who wants to rank their own country against our ecofeminist demands. Um, so obviously we have here on the um, left side um, our different our menu um, and we have a brief explanation of how to use the scorecards and um, we have our empty scorecards here. So we've already um, done marvellous work to translate it into English, German, French and Portuguese. Um, and here we have our scoring instructions um, and this is basically a bit more detail about how we've ranked the different parties. Um, yes, so we have, first of all, committed, um, green, partially committed, yellow and not committed red. Um, but maybe I'll come on to that a bit later whenever we're talking about how exactly we've scored the different parties. Um, next we have keywords and this is very central to our scoring system because um, what we've looked for in our different manifestos um, and we've listed what words, keywords we would be looking out for in the manifestos when we've been ranking them. Um, so something to say regarding the keywords are that they are not necessarily an indication of something going well in the manifesto. So we have just listed loads of things that can be um, related to the topic uh, that you should have a look for because sometimes you won't find chemicals if you search for chemicals you might need to search for pesticides or you need to search for sustainable agriculture and etc uh, etc et so that's why we just listed some things that you should look for uh, the manifesto doesn't have to have all of these keywords no certainly it's generally my experience of i did rank some of the parties and it's for example with the chemicals you would obviously first of all look for the word chemical but there's different ways that go about approaching a policy so you do need to maybe type in different words and look out for different ones so yes this is why we have this and, so, and some keywords can be an indication of something that is actually bad like nuclear can be very problematic and uh, if they mention nuclear this is something you should take in consideration when you do the scoring so and there's other words as well that is not necessarily yeah, a good indication but just like if they are mentioning these words, then it might be more towards an orange or red scoring, so to say. Yeah, and sometimes it's really confusing about the EU groups and the EU parties, so maybe you want to say something about that too? Yes, so as I said in the beginning of this call, this is, this is a foundation. The scorecard is for you to kind of learn, it's a tool for you to learn okay, where do I start? Where do I start looking? Um, what other things could I find? It is, it's, to, I need to say a disclaimer here. It is the first step. It's based on party manifestos. And in manifestos, parties tend to want to put the highest, most positive language in. And then it does not always represent what the, they will act on, as we are well aware. So um, it's a first step. And what we would recommend you to do after you've looked at this is maybe go and have a look at how have they voted before within the EU. This is important. Uh, but also look at articles. And the next step would be to find which group and political party they're part of. And this is where it gets messy. And this is where most people might, some people might be aware, but this is where it can get really messy. Because I think a lot of people don't really understand political groups and the political uh, party differences. So there are EU level political groups uh, and there are eight groups in the European Parliament. To, so if you come from a small country, um, your party representative will be part of one of these political groups that you can see on the screen. Um, what the groups, they're not a legal entity. That means they're not a party, uh, but they do like vote, they strategize together. Uh, they don't have a manifesto, but that's how they exist. So they, they do a lot of work together. They just don't, you don't vote on them. And then the next 
thing. So in the EU political groups, you can have EU parties and smaller parties. So um, the difference then is EU parties. EU parties are EU level parties. It's the same party can exist in several countries and then they kind of have an international party. They do have a manifesto. You don't vote on the EU level party, but you vote on the, that party within your country. Um, so we have written, we've tried to, it becomes a lot of, it's very complicated. So we've written this little, what does this mean in practice? So it's kind of like a little case study you can have a look at after this call. But um, why it doesn't matter for us as voters? It matters for us because if you have small parties or you come from a small country, um, it's not only what your party manifesto says that matters because you do trade-offs and negotiate within these groups. And then sometimes you have to vote on things that might not be in your manifesto that is in the general interest, interest of the bigger group. Um, so you might find it very shocking that some of your parties is part of a group that you don't generally support their kind of uh, politics. So this is also something you have to be aware of when you look deeper. And this is something that we found when we looked at the jungle of manifestos. And there is a way for you to find out which group your MEP belongs to. It's on our website. You can click on it and it gives you a website that looks like this. And then you search for your country and you search for a person and then it shows you which group it's part of. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Um, it's very useful to get an insight into that as well. Um, something some of us probably haven't looked into before, including me, to be honest. So <laughs> this is very useful. Um, and would you like to tell us um, a bit more about um, the scoring and the criteria we've used? Yeah, Jamesy, would you like to say the scoring? Yes, certainly. So um, we have decided on three categories. And um, first of all, we decided on committed. And committed um, basically means if we were analysing a manifesto that this group um, covered all, either all of what we've included on the scorecard page as touched on the issues that we have in our more information boxes. And if they have, um, for example, if I take the example of the climate action, that they hit the box of talking about urgency, whether they include social analysis or make the gender link. Um, so there's, I'd say, another disclaimer could be that there's a range of, within each category here, we have parties which are even more committed in that region and partially committed and not committed. And some that we say, for example, it's not committed. Um, have made some kind of mention, but it's very weak. So, um, for example, um, in Sweden, there was a party that said they're all for climate action, but when you looked further, they were actually actively against a lot of the actions needed to do urgent climate action. So um, then I gave them a not committed because it's you. You kind of have to, yeah. You have to look a little bit beyond just empty words and then see what more. And that's why the, the keywords are very helpful because then you can really locate what are they actually saying. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think that maybe. Yeah, and yeah. also, so, yeah, um, so there's also another point. So it's not committed. There's also something called no mention. Um, and this is something, so we'll tie this in with lessons learned. This is something that I can speak from marking or scoring the Swedish parties is there's been a big difference between um, the length of the manifesto. Some have been three pages and some have been 28, 40 pages. That means if there's three pages, they're not going to touch on everything that we have on the scorecard. And then we've given them a red, but it's a no mention. It doesn't mean that their politics is bad. It just means that they just not mentioned it. Um, and that's something to be aware of, like the length of the manifestos. It could be that they, they might not have capacity to have points 
on all of the issues. And then we've also had some like issues when scoring has been difficult sometimes because you're you score and we've been sing, sitting in a team scoring so we can kind of um, ask each other for support but sometimes for example you if you want to do a scoring in your home country uh, you might have to do this alone and then we just would like to tell you that if you have questions you can always email us and we can kind of give you some instructions on how we like um, thought when we were scoring but generally the difference the difficult bit has been between committed and partially committed at least from my point of view Yes, I think um, one of the important lessons I learned from, for example, doing Ireland um, was that if I was unsure, I would leave the ranking to the very end and then really going through each category and comparing each of the parties to be, have a, it's all relative and basically comparing them to be fair on each party. Yeah, so. and it is a, it's an eco-feminist scorecard that is to be stressed. It, to get a green, you need to have a social analysis. If you don't have a social analysis, you don't get green. There's been a couple of exceptions, and that's if their politics is just so incredibly progressive and it touches on everything that we have on the, the scorecard, but most of the time that's not the case. Most of the time they say a couple of things and then they don't make a social analysis, then they get a partially committed. But committed, that, that's when you use a, yeah. When you, it doesn't have to be just gender. It can just be, it can be like that. You have to recognize that different people have different needs. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe it's a good time to mention that we do um, have existing scorecards um, already, but we are, as part of this webinar, we would love to reach out to you members um, of this group. So perhaps if you want to take out this um, and state this out on your own and do scoring of your um, parties in your country. Um, because we already, as you can see, we've Portugal, France, Netherlands, but we are working as a team here, but we don't have the resources, obviously. No. <laughs> um, a huge team to every, every party in every country. So it is essential that we have um, someone to join our wonderful project. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So once you fit in the scorecard according to the instructions you gave earlier, how, how can I submit the scorecard? So basically you can submit it by emailing either of us. Uh, you will receive an email after this call and you can re just resend it. Or you can submit it here. And then basically what happens on this page is there's a submit button and then there's a link to my email. So either way, <laughs> it's just my email and then you can submit it and then I, can, I will post it on the website for you. Nice, nice and, uh, nice and easy. Yeah. Good. Yes. yes, and once you have done a scorecard um, and we've posted it on the website, we very strongly encourage you to kind of put it on social media and um, start sharing it to people in your country, tag your decision makers, etc. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Yeah. So maybe just to show you again, the scorecards that we've already done. So it's for um, Portugal, for France, the Netherlands, Germany. For Germany, we've done it in German, um, as well as in English. That's why we have two here. Um, because yeah, we Germans just don't really like to translate it sometimes, so it's nice to have it in our own language. Um, and we've done it for Sweden as well as the EU parties. Um, Hannah is and already... Ireland as well. Oh, it's coming up Ireland. today. Yeah, yeah. Ireland's mm -hmm. coming. That's true. So, as we've already said, it, we really encourage you to help us with them <laughs> um, and score a few other countries or parties we haven't really considered yet. Um, or also, if you want to score the parties that we have scored already but have a different view that would also be interesting so you can still submit it to us so and yeah maybe you could show us then how from so you scored for germany so you and jane scored germany maybe if you show them the german card yeah and then yes. share with us how, what was your experience in, experiences when you did the scorecard so let's have a quick look on the german scorecard so this is the German one, quite nice and colorful. 
Um, <laughs> Lots of red. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot of red. And we actually started, um, let's say, from the right. <laughs> and it was quite depressing in the beginning, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, it got definitely better. But what we noticed in a lot of manifestos was that really the social analysis is missing um, in a lot of manifestos and according to a lot of um, or in association to a lot of uh, topics. So with Germany, um, the, the fun part was also that a lot of manifestos are very long. So for example, the one for the Green Party was um, 160 or 170 pages. So that's why it's very good to use the keywords that um, Hannah and Jane showed you before to um, go through the manifestos and really look for them and then just kind of read, just read into the context a little bit um, of that paragraph, for example, if, if that's possible. That's how I did it. Um, yeah. I think you can <laughs> yeah, the same. Um, so we could have... I just show you the German scorecard quickly because we have looked at the parties um, and have also written like a general summary on the parties, like for the CDU, SPD, and so on, how they are generally with their um, eco feminist demands or promises. Um, so that's just an overview. And if we go further down, then you can download the Ecofeminist feminist scorecard um, the, for Germany, yeah. Uh, that's just scoring again, if they're committed, partially committed or not committed. And then you find the scoring for each party on the different topics. So for climate, you can see the CDU is partially committed, SPD is committed, Greens are committed, and so on. Okay, parking here. So. We, we leave it by climate then, um, yeah. uh, and just, so was there, like, if we now speak about you, share your like experiences, like was there anything that was shocking for you when you did Germany? Like, what? was there anyone that was actively against or? So massively shocking was uh, the AFD, <laughs> uh, which probably comes with no surprise. Um, they are actually against um, the climate protection, so, of course, they don't believe in climate change or they don't think it is a man-made or human-driven um, phenomenon. Um, so they actually say that, for example, uh, CO2 is very important for us because it really helps um, our plants to grow and um, we need, <laughs> we need uh, <laughs> The plants to grow because, of course, our population is increasing, and that's why um, that's why uh, we need more uh, like agriculture and so on to feed us all. So CO two CO two is a good thing. Um, we all know it's not. Uh, so it's just shocking to read it in the manifesto, but at the same time, it's just really interesting to look at all those manifestos in such detail and to understand. You know, try to understand uh, where different parties are coming from and their perspectives and I think it really helps to then kind of argue against um, like people wanting to vote for AFD for example because you know their manifesto and you know um, the kind of statistics behind it and like maybe for those who are not I think. Maybe you could explain okay. who are yeah, AFD for those who are yeah. not from Germany. Yeah, okay, so the AFD is an alternative for Germany and they're a very um, right-wing um, party in Germany. Um, yeah. So I think it's a good point that you make that if we haven't done this for all of the countries. We have done this for Sweden and Germany. So to yeah. kind of give you a little bit more, if you want to do scoring to help you in how we were thinking but it is a good leverage when you want to kind of talk to people because one we were talking about structural changes yeah. right one of the structural sorry structural challenges in our region is the rise of the conservative right AfD is the representation of the like conservative right so then having this in it's a great kind of way it's good meat for your 
for your argument, like yes. arg a dialogue with people who wants to vote on them. Yeah, so, yeah. To also take it apart a little because with a lot of um, yeah, right uh, wing um, parties, I think they have very short messages, uh, very emotional messages, which um, people then kind of or get people get them people to follow <laughs> and um, I think with knowing a bit more about um, what's actually behind those short messages I think the argument like the dialogue and the argumentation is much easier against it then yeah Question um, yeah so I think that leaves it time so uh, we have 20 minutes now for questions so I will open up the floor and unmute you all and then if you would like to uh, ask any questions, now is the time. So to, yeah. Okay, so there was a little bit of a uh, echo. If you would like to ask a question, you can unmute yourself. And I see Juana, you have unmuted yourself. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh... I'm Juana and work for a, a Global Forest Coalition. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations for this brilliant work. Uh, really is uh, promising and I uh, hope that we can uh, publish uh, this, uh, this scorecard and, uh, and more people can use it in different countries. And uh, really, uh, I like very much. And uh, my my question is: uh, You said that uh, you we will get the link of this scorecard uh, on how to use so in uh, after this call, eh? Yes. Yeah, I will recirculate it. Oh, okay. Then we are free to to share with uh, colleagues and. Uh, other organizations that they can use this one yeah yeah we would appreciate so much if you would like to share it with your networks or on social media and with your family and friends i'm sending it to all my family all my friends <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. okay thank yeah. you Anna, and thank you for joining yeah and and i don't know if it is possible but uh, i would advise to to make a more, um, how do you call it, um, um, uh, propaganda of this one. It is possible even we can, we can try to, to, to um, let's say, arrange in, in um, uh, I, I don't know what you want to say, Juana. So we're actually doing a Twitter storm tomorrow. And I'll uh -huh. think about it later. And that's a way we're trying to make, sh to ensure that everyone gets hold of this, or as many as possible gets hold of this. Uh -huh. um, because we yeah. don't want to work in as good if people hear it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, also in newspapers, did, did you see the, also these possibilities? Do you, do you see? So we have, Jane had written a blog post, and we, I will write a blog post in Sweden that will be published, I think, next week. Uh, and that's another way, yeah. So that's definitely yeah, we've um, already had an interest. Like I'm, I'm doing the Irish parties at the minute, and we've already had suggestions that I speak to the, the journal, for example, which is a paper in Ireland. Yeah. So we spread this. So def definitely, yeah. It is. That. It is a part of the next steps. This is what we're doing. So we're trying mm -hmm. to, uh, to get it published not only on blogs online, but also in papers. Yeah. But this is something you, uh, like everyone on this call, could support us with as well. Um, to reach out. We are writing a press release now when we have a lot of party scored that we will share. Um, yeah, if yeah. you need any um, like article or blog uh, post about us, uh, then you could also get in touch with us and yeah. we would share it with you, like what we've already produced um, and sent out to the media. And then in addition, we're also printing it here in Germany. Um, we were thinking whether or not we should print it to other countries as well. That's still something that is on the agenda. Um, uh, and we will use it, we will send it to places here in Germany, but also use it at this street festival that we have uh, here in Munich. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, nice. Now I, I will try to, to do something here. I, I remember from the Hrung links, but I don't know. I still I have to <laughs> search uh, in that uh, how is the results in the Netherlands. Yeah, there is one for the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will I will see that one and uh, see also if we can uh, do something using this scorecard. Yes, thank you yeah. so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That is all. Thank you. Right. Anyone else who'd like to ask a question? Let's see. You have to unmute yourself if you would like to ask a question. I see. I see at the bottom here. Uh, Kaka, would you like to? Or Stana, both of you are unmuted. Would you like to ask something? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe um, we could talk a little bit about our um, social media campaign mm -hmm. yeah sure. and the social social media storm that we've planned <laughs> yes so tomorrow at 11 to 1 so this is if we have done the scoring in your countries or um you are oh, why can i not see this sorry um if you can join us tomorrow we will have a social media storm and i'm trying to open it for you let's see uh, we have created some uh, t some graphics that you can use, and then we have stored all the scorecards in these uh, folders. So, for example, we're talking about Netherlands before, uh, and then we have created tweets where we say congratulations. This party in Netherlands has the best climate politics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So tomorrow you can help us, and uh, we're trying to. A pro, like storm Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and uh, we would appreciate all the support we could get. I am finalizing a communications plan for this that I will share with all of you on this call and I will also share it with um, a lot of our networks that have shown interest in this. Um, and then if you can't join tomorrow, you can still you can still use that throughout until the election. So you can still tweet those what we would love from you is if you could tweak it into your own like your own language so um, they will be written in English now but you might want to specifically write it in say for me I will write it in Swedish because it's more accessible if it's written in your own language um, and um, then always include the hashtag ecofeminist scorecard there's already some tweets on, on the hashtags. There are a few Instagram posts that just uh, use this hashtag everywhere. Um, let's see if I can show you. I can look at this one, for example. So use this hashtag in all your communication and we will find you and then we will just retweet you and share your messages and try and get your messages um, more attention. Um, yeah, so that's that's a very concrete way of, of how you could help us spread the message of this. Another way would be, for example, writing blogs about, about it in your own country, in your own language. Um, if you would like to do a scorecard, that would be so much appreciated because as you can see, most of the countries we've done is the, the high income countries in the region. It would be good to have a little bit more variety of countries. And um, yeah, another one, if you are interested in having them printed, uh, that's something you can also approach us afterwards and we can kind of discuss how we could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no. I think I only have one last comment, but um, I, I really hope, like leaving this call, you won't think it's a lot of work actually to go about doing this because I think I, I started last week doing the Irish parties and I felt like we'd done so much of the formatting and they set out the tool so that it actually with the keywords and the format that we will send to you yeah. it isn't actually as time consuming than you might think so 
Yeah, that's very true. Actually, Juliana, if she, I'm not sure if she is on this call, um, she helped us doing the translation for um, the Portuguese one, and she scored them as well. And she was just so quick, like it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, she she did it yesterday in a very short time, basically, and it was very very quick to see that it's really very quick. Because what is to be highlighted is that we have not done this kind of scoring for all of them. For some of them, uh, like the Netherlands, they will just be the scoring because it, we wanted this to be as easy for you to use as possible. If you would like to write explanations, that's completely okay. And we encourage you to do that too, but there's no stress at all to do that. So France doesn't have it, Netherlands doesn't have it, Ireland will not have it, and the EU parties does not have it. Um, that doesn't mean that it cannot be justified. If there is some questions regarding some of them, we have already received some questions about France, then we will ask the person who did the scoring and then we can share that. So that, that's still, there's still ways to um, uh, yeah, yeah, I think to get better understanding. Um, as, as me and Anya did the German parties, as we went along, for each other, we kept a note, even the the quote of within the manifesto as we went along, and that was very easy to do as you're going along, and then you almost have a general summary in the table format that we have. So it's actually quite easy to do, but um, as again, I want to reassure you, it's not yeah. it's not intended to be a massive amount of work. <laughs> no, no, it is as much work as you want it to be. They can be like it can go. Quite quick. Yeah. Yeah, and don't feel like you have to do all the parties. So we focused on the on the main parties, I'd say, or the, the biggest ones in, in Germany and also in other countries. So that would reduce the work as well. Yeah. I think the only other thing I would say is that with Ireland, for example, I don't know how it will be in other countries, but there is some individuals who are candidates and I'm yet to kind of get my head around how to analyze individuals but that is also maybe a disclaimer also when you're going about this that there may be individuals who could be very promising but unfortunately it's they don't have a manifesto so we're still working on that and how to yeah. approach that <laughs> yeah and then it's a learning curve so this is something we were discussing as well and um, the demands they are based on on some of the pressing needs in our region when it comes to like on this issues um you could you you would be able to replicate this in different regions but you would have to kind of alter the demands for example if you do it in in asia you might want to add and remove some you might want to add one on decent work and like the scorecard is definitely open use you can definitely replicate this in regions outside of the eu if you would want to but yeah um the topics we picked might not be as applicable Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, do you have any further questions? If you do have further questions, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, Dana? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I would like to con congrats to the brilliant work. Uh, I think this is really urgently needed. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I had uh, some technical issues in, in the beginning, so I missed almost uh, half of, uh, of the webinar, but uh, I plan to hear it again later from the recordings, if it's possible to share the link later. Yes, of course, yeah, we will do that. Yes. Yes, so uh, I, I will hear the first half later. And uh, I will do my best to share and actively retweet your post tomorrow in Czech. Uh, so uh, to join the uh, Twitter storm. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, because uh, I think it's, it's really needed in Czech Republic because the feminism as a word is almost the root word. <laughs> now nowadays not not as bad as in poland for example but still very provocative for the mainstream so i think that something like this is 
quite needed <laughs> in Czech context. <laughs> Sana, would you want to do one maybe for the Czech? <laughs> uh, well, I, I will definitely discuss it with uh, organization 5050, which is uh, like feminist uh, organization in Czech Republic. And uh, I, will, I will discuss this possibility and I think it would be great to do this for, for Czech. But uh, I cannot promise right now, you know. That's understandable. Yes, and uh, I, I also don't understand because I, it's, it was probably said in the beginning, but uh, do you do the scorecards for all of the subjects or parties who are can, uh, on the candidate lists or just for the, those who had some chance to get into the parliament? Uh, so we pick the biggest ones. Yeah. Uh, and then, for example, I, in Sweden, I picked one smaller one that's not as big, but that is a feminist party. Yeah. So then I did like one exception or two exceptions. Mm -hmm. And I know this is something we did in Germany too. Yeah. So that's definitely something like if you know there's a party that's super, super progressive, that would be good for these topics, but it are very small. And yeah. what is good to know about the European elections is there's no barrier, right? So you don't have to have 5% to get into parliament you can be a very small small uh, party yeah, yeah i know but i'm afraid that there are no pro such a progressive parties in czech republic uh, oh. i'm afraid uh, yeah but uh, still i hope i will find some at least yellow <laughs> yes and do, do send it to us so we can put it on our social media channels and on our website when you do if you do that or what you yes do. of course of course awesome. thank you Thank but, you. But definitely, I would like to thank you for this brilliant work. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Anyone who maybe feels that, yes, I'm going to do this now? <laughs> Anyone who would like to volunteer and do a scorecard? I think, yeah. Do we have any more questions? Otherwise, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think we can, mm -hmm. we can close it. And you can um, send us an email anytime. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, if you have questions at a later stage. And just to, again, what we can do is just share, show you where, where can you find the scorecard. So you go to, you can either just search for e go and it's the uh, okay it's this one so it's wcf slash org slash eco feminist scorecard one word this is the page where you can find all of the information we have talked to you about today but you can also download the copy of the scorecard so maybe i was a little bit quick i'll show you again just scroll down to the page to this section and you can download it this will be in english this is the empty one and then there are other empty ones you found he can find here so for German, French, and Portuguese. And below here, you can see the scorecards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, great. Oh, I see questions. <laughs> OK. No, no, it, someone says, great, thanks, good job, I will do deeper now, definitely. But I don't know who it is, because it, it looks like they're written in WCF's name. That's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone who attended the call. Yeah, yeah thank so you for your time. time. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's Veronique. No, Veronique, we cannot hear you. Would you like to ask us something? You have to, you have to unmute yourself. 
thank you thank you again to all of you and bye bye i will i will i'm looking forward to to your uh, uh to your mail thank you thank you very thank much you. bye bye everyone have a nice evening okay so now now, Veronique, we can hear you, so now you can speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, Hello, thank you. everybody. Thank you, goodbye. No. Sorry, just, just stay for a little bit longer, because I think uh, uh, we have a question, one more question. What no, it's not a question, actually. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. No, it's not a question. I just wanted to say that I really thank you for the great job, because we, uh, we couldn't do much. There, there were so many parties in France. <laughs> Um, that candidate for the election so we didn't have time to to do the job so we really thank you because it's a really great job and uh, tomorrow we'll follow and uh, we'll take part in the um, in the Twitter storm so it's the least we can do uh, really thank you very much it's really great and it's so um, attractive as well so it's really pleasant to tweet these documents Veronique? yep that I just I think if someone is motivated in the French uh, WECF office, uh, a short summary of the main party's manifesto, like it has been done for Germany, Germany Sweden, would be super useful. I think it helps a lot. And can you send me what has been done for Germany? Because yeah. I, mm. we'll send, we'll send yeah. you a picture. It's on the website. Okay. okay. It's, uh, maybe not easy to find at the first sight, so we'll send you the picture, the screenshot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Mara. Thank you. Really great, great, great job. Great, <laughs> <laughs> great job. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.